continuing to do that right now. President Obama is expected to meet again with congressional leaders next week about the dreaded fiscal cliff. Leaders from the White House and the uh, Congress are calling for a preliminary meeting of con calling it constructive so that they can find an answer before everyone's taxes are going to go up. Fair and balanced now. We're going to be joined by conservative talk show host Ben Ferguson and liberal radio show host Mark Levine. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. Great to have you here on this holiday weekend. Good to be Thank here. Thank you, Emma. Uh, ben, let me begin with you. Conservatives are blasting some of the GOP lawmakers who may be already caving in on the issue of tax hikes. Uh, how do you see this shaping up? Well, it's going to be a big fight. I mean, you have a lot of people that said we're not going to raise taxes on the conservative side. Now they're realizing there is something that's called having to have bipartisan support to get something done. And if you come into the room in the negotiating room with these extremes of we're not going to move and we're not going to move, it's going to hurt America. And so I think what you're seeing now is you see guys from Georgia like Chambliss, who's Senator Chambliss, who says, hey, we are going to look at possibly raising taxes. We got to figure out how to do it. At the same time, many of these guys ran and said, I'm not going to raise taxes if you vote for me. So they're going to have issues with their constituents. But this fiscal cliff is going to have to take some people getting in a room and saying together, we're going to work on a, a solution. We're both going to do things we don't want to do, but we're going to do something good for America. And they have to do it, and the American people know it. Well, Mark, you know, there's a big standoff uh, underway, as we've been talking to our viewers about. Uh, the president thinks he has a mandate uh, based on his reelection, but the members of the House believe, the GOP in the House believe they have a mandate based on the fact that they still control the House. Uh, how do you see this, st this standoff uh, shaping up as we get down to the wire? Well, I agree with Ben. It's time for compromise, and it's time for compromise based on what the American people voted for. It's important to point out that not only the Americans elect President Barack Obama and three-quarters of the Senate seats that are up for re-election went to Democrats, but a majority of Americans voted for Democrats in the House. It's only due to the drawing of district lines that the Republicans still control the House. So I think Obama's plan to keep taxes low for 98 percent of Americans, the Bush tax cuts, the Obama tax cuts, to keep that low, I think that's something that should be agreed to right away. Let's not go off the fiscal cliff. Then if you want to discuss whether or not the millionaires in this country should pay the Clinton tax rates. One thing we should remember is that the millionaires themselves in polls show they believe they need to pay more taxes. 70 percent of Americans believe that they need to pay more taxes. They have the lowest taxes they've had in 80 years, and we have a high deficit. I think they can afford to pay a little more. Yeah, but Ben, the fact is uh, many uh, Republicans are saying, okay, you want to talk about taxes. Let's also yeah. take a look at entitlements and other spending cuts. And so far, yeah. uh, the White House hasn't really put forward anything on paper that they're willing to discuss. Well, and I think that's one of the hardcore issues here is, is there's this whole idea coming from many of the Democrats just like, look, we're just going to raise taxes, we're going to spend a lot of money, but we're going to offset it by raising taxes. We still have a staggering economy. We still have a high unemployment. We're going to hit 50 million Americans on food stamps, and there's no end inside of that number continuing to constantly grow. Even as unemployment rates have gone down, we're adding to the people on food stamps, which just doesn't make sense if you talk to economists. So the question is, how do you reform these things? And at the same time, not just say, we're going to raise taxes and continue to spend money we don't have. I mean, if you look at this White House, they've been borrowing 47 cents of every dollar we spend in our budget this year. We can't continue to do that. It's not going to work. So they're going to have to give on those issues and not just say, we're going to go after the rich, we're going to take their money, and oh, by the way, it's the wealthy people that are creating jobs and businesses in this country, not poor people. Mark, do you see any kind of give uh, on the Democrat side when it comes to these entitlements and some of the other spending cuts that uh, need to be addressed? Well, look, someone has to pay for the, the Bush war in Iraq. Someone has to pay for the recession. And this idea That's in this Christmas season that we're going to take food from Tiny Tim, take those food stamps away, instead of taking a gold coin for Ebenezer Scrooge, it doesn't make sense to most <laughs> Americans, including millionaires, who believe they need to pay a little more. I think the one thing that the party should be able to agree on but is that 98 percent of us should not this. have our taxes increased. As President Obama has put, has put forward, that plan has been signed by the Senate. It's been signed by Obama. We can make sure that 
98% of Americans, everyone that earns $250,000 or less, will not have their taxes increased a dime if the Republicans Mark, Mark, sign if on the, the dotted line. Expire, and I think they should do so. Uh, just on entitlements, let me, let me quickly say that I think there are things that can be done on entitlements. One of the things that can be done, for example, is if everybody pays their fair share, if the rich who pay 0.1% of their taxes in Social Security though. and Medicare ben, will pay the same things that other Americans pay. We're running out of time, gentlemen. Gentlemen, we're running out of time. Ben, you got the last word here really quickly. Yeah, look, I mean, here's the thing. It's this whole idea that somehow people that are paying the majority of taxes are not paying their fair share. I mean, what is the definition of fair share? If I make $200,000 a year and I'm paying at 35% and someone that's making $50,000 a year is not paying anywhere close to that, how is someone that's wealthy not paying their fair share? 50% of all taxes are collected by the top 1% of wage earners. The clock is ticking uh, on our take, end take as well as for uh, taxpayers more. who are wait, wait, watching and waiting to see uh, what uh, what it transpires over the next few weeks as the deadline looms for the fiscal cliff. Thank you both for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you, us. Emma. Well, for years, shoppers have flocked to